So my name is Jessica Matza. I am the co-founder of River Nua. I am a um, teacher at our tribal high school here in Fort Hall, Idaho on the Indian Reservation. Um, I am a mom and a wife and um, like, you know, a lot of you wearing a lot of different hats. And I'm Sammy Matza, grandfather, father, and husband and extended family member here in the Shoshone Bannock tribes. Uh, research biologist from in the Shoshone Bannock tribes in our Fish and Wildlife Department. You know, the Columbia Basin used to be the largest producer of salmon on the West Coast and arguably the world. And that's um, become greatly diminished over time. And the root cause of the ecological peril um, out here in the Pacific Northwest is also really inextricably linked some of the social injustices that have occurred on this land. So I wanted to sort of invite you guys to talk a little bit about what it means to be salmon people. We're using that really as a way to um, bring people back to understanding like how we use the land. Because here, like what we're saying in the film is like, we look out our window every time you see a, a tractor pulling the a disc plow down the field they're really erasing us from the land and that direct erasing of the land is painful and that kind of um, culture which is agriculture is really hurtful for us to live around and and in that starting to become more relevant to the rest of us as well um, we're not subject to that alone anymore and we're starting to understand what effects that's having um, overall we think about that in terms of like how we are as a salmon-based culture and as a salmon-based culture we we are saying that all of our life is wrapped around this species for us it's it's more than just a fish that we're talking about um how this salmon shaped our life ways and our worldview i think also just to add in a little bit that um that's very accurate and current even today. Like the salmon are very important to us in present day. Um, we hold them in very high regard and they structure even our value systems as um, Joshone, Joshone Bannock people. Our relationship with salmon and how our salmon brothers are being treated is very similar to how us as Native people are being treated as well. I will also add to though that the salmon and our youth that do make it past those barriers and get into the next stage of their life, like they are some resilient, amazing, <laughs> you know, beautiful youth and fish. And I just, I am always amazed how determined both are to succeed in life. In all of the Columbia Basin, when we think about salmon restoration, we really focus is the Snake River Basin um, and the Salmon River because there is so much just incredible, pristine, high mountain um, habitat. But there's another layer to the fact that it's pristine for you all and the reason you guys bring your, you take your trips there. So probably first and foremost, why we go to the Middle Fork is that is our ancestral homelands. We have family that have been forcibly removed from there. And for myself, I, I find the Middle Fork to be, and I use this example quite often, even with my students, um, like returning to family, like having that connection and understanding that you know, it's always been there, even if we didn't know it or not, but you feel that connection once you're there. And so for us, when we go back there, it's almost, it, it is, it's rejuvenating our spirit. Every year we go back there. And I would say people understand that rejuvenation of the spirit that use that river, um, that go along it. And, you know, talking to our children and our youth and understanding that, like you, you are supposed to be here. This is where a part of you has always been and where a part of you is always going to be. One of the questions we've talked about before, Sammy, is why now? These da the dams on the river have been here for a, for a while. Um, we've known for a long time about the impacts that the hydropower dams are having on salmon run. We are right now very sadly um, witnessing extinction. 
it is happening in front of our eyes at a very slow pace, um, but it is happening. Uh, much like climate change, it's happening in front of us and, and we're starting to see the effects of it. Some of the fish that are coming back to the Middle Fork, which is a pristine habitat, um, those fish, uh, I would say temporal populations from year to year, are they're disappearing. So removing the four lower snake dams right now seems imperative given the conditions that our salmon are facing. Far more imperative than it's ever been. The other thing is that I think a lot of times within society, within, you know, just getting bogged down with things, we think a lot about um, competition. And uh, Sam and I talk very often about cooperation versus competition. And so I think when you include Native communities who have managed these lands for since time immemorial, um, you're going to come across systems that have been proven to be successful. You know, there was a time where we were living with the salmon as equals and even more so where we considered them to be more important than human beings. And I think just sharing that space and even, you know, making some elbow space for Native communities to speak and let you know what is important to them is, is really a good way to start moving towards change. There's this transformation that happens, um, like every day going down the river. We see it in drum making, in drawing, <laughs> when we're painting, during science class. These are real big. And during math lessons. Pepsi, where's the radius at? I just see their confidence building in who they are. I see them coming out of their shell or coming out of this uncertainty and starting to just show us who they are and showing themselves who they are too. I just know that a lot of beautiful things happen when we're on the river together. <laughs> 